So let's get this started. So welcome back to the strategy show everybody, sprinters and Frederick. We were discussing last week when to give up and we had these examples. You test an experiment, you test a product, you test a service, you don't have enough validation of your hypothesis of your assumption. Now we go to the scenario that you have validation that you are onto something and you did not just solve an individual problem, you found a gold mine, you found something that more people need. And now we are going to ask Frederick, the co-founder of phrase.com, who did this more than once successfully, how would you proceed now, Frederick? Yeah, after the initial validation of the idea and of your of your concept of your of your um, product um, it's it's not really over because uh, like m many people call this already like product market fit but but to me product market fit really really depends on nailing the channel so when you have the initial proof of concept um, you have some validity on the sellability of your product and that it's really worth something for your target audience. It's all about finding out a how big is that target audience? Like you have validity for one to a couple of sales, but how many people are really actually in that market? Uh, how you can approach the market best? Uh, is it something that you can sell digitally, that you can sell by by just using ads or just SEO optimization or uh, something similar, which also really depends then on, on the time frame you have. Uh, if it's an opportunity that will last for a couple of months, couple of years, because timing is everything. If you uh, have a good idea, you can be sure that a couple of people around the world have a pretty similar idea. And usually the ones kind of nailing the mechanisms nailing how to sell it, how to market it, and uh, the, the good or the best channels for their target audience will be the most successful. And n now you probably ask like, like how, how to nail it. Uh, to me, it's uh, similar to the exploration of new ideas. You will have to kind of build your experiments because um, usually these uh, things take a bit of time. Uh, for example, SEO, you won't see any effects uh, in a couple of days or even months. It's something that spans a long time. So you basically have to think about channels to validate that before you invest in the SEO part. So, um, for example, if it's about content, you could spread the content through LinkedIn, Facebook, or uh, through ads, just to get users early and to validate if the kind of content works. And then you can build up SEO kind of to reduce your costs on the channel. And that brings me to the next big factor. If you have figured out some dynamic, like some loop that works, like you put out uh, some marketing, you get a funnel of leads through that, you really have to uh, think about the, the costs and the structure of the sale. Like, do you really um, sell or do you get the leads at the right costs for your product, for example? Like in the beginning, you won't look at the cost that much. Like it will be huge even getting to customers. But when you're in this scaling phase, when it's not about attracting one customer per month, but it's about attracting a hundred or maybe even a thousand customers, it becomes a numbers game and it becomes a numbers game really quick because you can waste a lot of money and resources. Mm. Another part that I think is a bit undervalued is kind of your, your personal um, passion for the project and market. So I see a lot of founders that are kind of detached from the market they operate in because they see themselves as company builders or as, as kind of business model generators, something like that. And I respect that. 
There are great minds on that. Uh, it's it's a lot about kind of the inner workings of the economy and uh, how to sell something. And uh, you can be successful without really having passion for a market. There there are examples for that. I think. Don't want to blame anyone. Um, but I think it helps a lot for a company um, if you're motivated and if you're really passionate about the problem because it gives yourself um, drive and motivation. And the thing about um, starting out is in the beginning, um, everything like, like there are a lot of big levers you can pull and you will find out things and you will improve things and you will always have the idea, okay, this thing will really, really move us that that much closer to the goal. But over the years, you will find out the goal is getting always bigger and it's always a bit further away than you think. And it's about small steps and small improvements. So you have to be willing to put in the years, not only put in the hours in the early days. Sometimes it's also good like to step back from it for, for a couple of days and just have take your time to think because if you have initial success stuff like operations building up the company um, uh, going beyond your your early early team will really eat up your time and kind of um, adds on to your play but you won't really have time to to focus on the the larger arc of things like where where your vision is going where you want to be in five years or where you want to be in 10 years and what i would urge everybody who is kind of stuck in this loop of day-to-day uh, -day optimization take a step back think about the long time plan and then try to align to that and for us right now we are a company of 50 people at the moment we are right at that stage we kind of nailed our day-to-day -day operations and we really have a valid business case we have a valid uh, channel case so we really improve um, our leads and um, we have a lot of happy customers who we interact with a lot and uh, really they they show us love and we try to show as much love as we can in moving things forward with the product and uh, solving problems um, but we are just now basically at this stage where we can really uh, think about the, the future uh, in a more, more strategic way. Who's your target group and what's the winning channel for you? So our target group, um, uh, or what set us apart from, from the market we are in is that we really focused on the end users building software. Those are developers, product managers, UX teams, designers, project managers. So the, um, the, the amazing teams that create all those innovative new products and build great technology every day. And localization often seemed like, like an afterthought. Like in the beginning, not, not every team started out to build a global product. And especially from Silicon Valley, you, you had this vibe that it's about making it in the US. And maybe a couple of years later, when we are already post IPO or whatever, we'll tackle Europe or Asia. And it really didn't matter. It's just some internationalization strategy. Um, in Europe, it was a different game because a lot of US companies and ideas grew from there and you had to be localized to kind of be successful in markets like Germany and, and markets like France, which, which are huge markets. But if you're really a local product, you also had to internationalize quickly um, to get to the next level because in, in some ways Germany is also a small market and Europe is, is way bigger. Uh, so there was more need for internationalization. And on the other hand, um, it was also through the channels that opened up, like uh, the, the App Store, the Google Play Store. It was way easier by means of distribution because digital products are really easy to, to distribute globally. Um, so um, for, for that reason, we uh, get, getting back to your question, um, 
we target those those teams that really build these products and go or have the need to go international and um, we give them mainly content so we give them tutorials on how to start out uh, what to think about um, how to do it on a technical level and then also um, what to be careful about on a linguistic level so uh, for us teams um, often localization is for example led by european team members because they kind of have this um, this this sense for the cultural differences for speaking multiple languages and that that you cannot just basically copy uh, your landing page and translate it into another language that you have to adapt it a bit and so for us this kind of content this educational content this really early stage uh, content really really helped and so we built that up uh, with with a big blog with uh, of course then seo traction organic leads and we mix it uh, with campaigning so we do um, kind of the the typical um, lead generation through gated content which really works well because we have positioned ourselves as an expert in the field and so there's already trust but of course, um, with this really specific content, you also have to increase your audience uh, through LinkedIn, business networks, uh, even Facebook, uh, Google ads, if it's highly transactional. And so we experiment a lot with that. And still to this day, which one, which one became the main channel? Is it now um, Facebook or LinkedIn or Google ads? Um, for us, uh, the, the main channel is by far organic, so SEO and word of mouth, uh, because um, we, have, we have a really strong um, recommendation base from, from our customers. So um, the, the thing about um, these, these teams or uh, digital product teams is um, people change companies in the US more so than in Europe. but they become promoters, they, they become multipliers of, of your idea and uh, basically of the idea that there is a solution for this problem. Because for us, the market is um, still very early in its development because the, the technologies were mainly built for language service providers in the past. And we've seen a couple of companies coming from, from that space trying to get into this tech and into this modern modern team space um, but it's really hard for them because they they have a different core audience and how did you get to such a high organic reach because that that would take many years right how did you speed it up so you um one of the the factors are we are not a um typical um, network um, product by means of that we have a lot of network effects of the product itself because it's usually used by companies um, who have no interest in kind of opening it up and making it social networky. Uh, however, um, as we really focused on the um, on the um, software production workflows and on the software development, we have still a large number of users for each company on the platform so a lot of interaction with our brand a lot of kind of uh, building up uh, an audience of promoters and these are very effective in in spreading the word um, because as i said they they switch companies they uh, new startups start up and they will um, they will be able to basically point to us. So that's still a very strong factor, this kind of uh, referral uh, marketing. Um, we also have uh, non-organic uh, lead generation and we see a lot of traction on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I think, is, is a great channel for business products because you get kind of the best of both worlds. You have a professional context, but you also have this, this um, news feed and uh, kind of this this browsability of the content uh, and and great tools of course for targeting uh, as well as um, for for um, getting lead information doing doing the forms and so forth so that's a great channel for us um, but but it's still kind of in the build-up love it 
so I have now so many questions about uh, what will be the topic of next week because next week we are going to meet here and deep dive into the success story of how you build up phrase.com and what were the obstacles, what were the challenges and how did you overcome them and what can other listeners who are also entrepreneurs learn from your journey. So I'm so excited to meet you again next week when we deep dive into the success story of phrase.com. Thank you, Frederick, for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Next week, we deep dive on the success story of phrase.com. So keep rolling, everybody. Entrepreneurial freedom is awesome. It's also a lot of hard work to get there. And when you are there, it's easy to lose your grip. Our community of over 16,000 entrepreneurs is getting stronger and stronger every week because we amplify each other. We share what works and drop the rest. We test, refine, improve. Check strategysprints.com slash clarity to level up your business and have fun doing it. <laughs>